Hi, I'm James Schellinglon. I'm here. I've moved from Prague to Olomont. And Olomont is, can, may be regarded as really the second town, second city of the Czech Republic. And we're going to find out why. And I'm here uh, with Jana Krasova, who's our uh, guide, who was our licensed guide, who took us, just took us around. We're, we're standing in front of, where are we standing in front of this, this cathedral? Uh, this is St. Wenceslas Cathedral. Uh, well, you've heard of him. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the entire tour we just did. It's really a marvelous medieval town, has an incredible history, and really is worth a visit for your clients uh, if you decide to send them outside and get outside into the Czech Republic and to other towns. And you're going to find out about all that on more on Insider Travel Report. And Jana, first of all, I want to thank you. We had a wonderful, it's, it was a quick tour, but you really took us on our paces all the way around the town. And we went through, it's a medieval walled town. It was actually a military town, a fort for essentially, uh, I believe in the 1500s or something like that. Yeah, the, yeah. And, actually 1600s. 1600s, I'm, I'm off my dates here, but it was, it was an amazing, amazing tour. Now we're going to talk a little bit about, so we started actually what they call the upper square. And uh, there's some beautiful things there. First of all, there's this really impressive monument, uh, Baroque monument. And tell us what that was. That, that is a Holy Trinity column. Uh, it was designed and built uh, for uh, the city. It was a gift by Václav Render, a citizen and famous and very rich uh, uh, artist, who gave this monument to city. Uh, this monument represents uh, the most important and most significant Austrian-Hungarian saints who are there to protect the city against disasters such as Swedish occupation or Black Death epidemies. Which you had, you had a little bit of both there, actually, <laughs> and that's why they had to protect the city. Then we moved over to what the, you know, Prague has this astronomical clock and so does Olomont. Uh, and, but this is a little different and tell us why, because it's a little more updated, right? Uh, it is a little bit of updated uh, to more current history of the Czech Republic. Uh, the Olomouc astronomical clock is uh, the same age, if could be said like this, uh, as the Prague astronomical clock, but uh, the, 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 the clock itself uh, was made uh, in 1953 during uh, the communism regime. And so the astronomical clock represents the working class, the working intelligence, and it also mentions, for example, Mr. Stalin or Mr. Lenin and many other important Czechoslovakian communists and Russian dates and anniversaries. We don't like it, but this is also part of our history which shouldn't be forgotten. So this is the reason why we keep it here. And, it went, and when it rings, on, I think at noon, uh, you can see the workers going around in little circles and things like that. We, we didn't see that. We saw the, the bell being run by some at, at about 11 o'clock. Uh, but it is, it is an important artifact of this, of this period. And then you're right in front of that is the town hall, right, that we're in front of, right? Yes, the town hall. Uh, the town hall is very beautiful, very beautiful. I like it very much. It is also possible to climb up the, the tower so you can see the whole city from the birth, birth per perspective. And uh, the, the town hall is, uh, comes from the medieval times. Of course, uh, originally it was small wood uh, and stone made house. Later, rebuild it, rebuild it, added, fixed, reconstructed. Last reconstruction actually was finished last year. Well indeed, the, the whole, this whole town has gone through. During COVID you had a little rebirth of the town where you renovated a lot of structures that were, you know, and brought them back to life uh, as what as they were, whether it was medieval times or elsewhere. Now it's amazing, and, um, amazing buildings all around the square and it is a pedestrian square, very few cars, right? Um, it, 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 it is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, actually the upper square is uh, one big roundabout and the town hall is the uh, center of the roundabout. So you have to definitely be careful. Yes, city of Olomouc uh, done a lot of work. Uh, you should keep on mind that for centuries not even one penny was invested into reconstruction of historical monuments. So it could be said that within these 
30 years Olomouc really done its job and it's very beautiful city. But this is also where you explained, I forgot to tell you, there's a city model in the, in the square where you sort of related the history of the, the city, how it became kind of a military garrison, a fort if you will, the Swedes came down, they were trying to get to Vienna, this is again the 1600s I believe? Uh, 1642. 1642, so and, and then, then you explained, and you can see that it is a walled city, it's a very formidable walled city. So you get that trend. Now, then we moved a little farther to what they call the lower square. And there's a lot of stuff going on. First of all, we passed a lot of buildings with either icons or emblems that indicated what they were for or who they were, right? Tell us a little bit about that because there's some amazing ones. There was one with a golden uh, a golden deer or golden, and then there's another one with a, a bull, a red bull. Uh, but what was all that about? Uh, that all was uh, originally these house symbols could be found all around Europe. They originally served uh, as uh, the, uh, the points for orientation. When you uh, arrived to the to Olomouc from, let's say, United States, and you wanted to make a business uh, in a house at the Black Horse, you asked anybody about the house at the Black Horse, and they sent you to one specific address those days. So no numbers, just a horse, right? No <laughs> numbers, no streets, just a horse. Well, that's great. It's, it's fun. And then there are some, some, some monuments in the square. There's actually, we were there, there was a market. And there were some contemporary things like the fountain that was really put in just a few years ago, which is actually I thought was very interesting. Uh, they, it was all with like um, dolphins and all kinds of things, right? Dolphins and antique saints and antique gods, uh, Poseidon, Neptune, Jupiter. The closest sea is over 1,000 kilometers far away from us, but we have the antique gods here to protect the city because the city was based according to the legend, which means that nobody sa can say it's not true, but it's not proof that it is true, so that's a legend, that Gaius Julius Caesar was running back from Gallia and he stepped uh, in Olomouc at St. Michel's Hill, where he found a very friendly Slavic settlement. These Slavics helped him to feed his soldiers and horses, so he decided to build here his camp. That's the reason why Probably one origin of the name of Olomouc can be Juliusensis, which in Latin means something which belongs to Julius. Yeah, and actually, and it is, does have a Roman past, as you can just heard that now. And then, so then we actually went through a, 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 a small passage, right? Actually, a pretty long passageway that had been a market, a place where, where there were stores, and now it's something else. It, it's literally wall to wall bars and nightclubs, pretty much, because this is a student, this is a university town. And I can, it, when we were there, it was a little closed, but I can imagine that that's hopping in the evening, right? Definitely, definitely. Wild, wild word. Uh, yes, these are masne krami, meat shops shops in which originally meat was sold uh, and close to it uh, is so-called Uhelne Ramnesti, a coal square and this location is in the very, his, the very center of the historical city and like you said all kinds of uh, rums, all kinds of vodka, all kinds of beer could be bought there. Now how come we didn't go there at night so we can hang out there? You should have more time and come <laughs> in the evening next time. <laughs> I think we should do that. I, that looked like a lot of fun. So then we walked through the wall itself and we went to the newer town uh, and, and there we found the old, yeah. what was the Jewish quarter. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about what, what you can find there and, and because there was a Jewish quarter, right? Yes, so when you leave the city, uh, close to the to the lower square you leave the city itself the historical city and you got to a busy road uh, actually uh, under this this road uh, is uh, in canalization system there is a uh, river morava which initially was made to flee the area in front of the town walls. Later, when uh, uh, the town walls were destroyed, this part of the city mostly uh, was occupied by Jewish community who were very rich and uh, successful businessmen, especially in sugar making uh, uh, business or brewing. They owned their houses and they also had their beautiful Byzantine style synagogue designed by Jakob 
Gardner. But unfortunately, this synagogue didn't survive the arrival of Nazi army in March 1939. Yeah, and it was. It's a beautiful area, and I can imagine what it was like. And you just heard, uh, it is it is 11 o'clock, I guess, or whatever of the time. So uh, now we went back through the wall and then through a really nice quiet quarter uh, that, that sort of really beautiful old streets and uh, old pensions, little hotels with you you can go. And, uh, you walk, and then we walked up the hill to a beautiful Baroque church and talk a little bit about what was that church and what's, what, what can you find there. St. Michel's Church is on the highest point of Olomouc on St. Michel's uh, Hill. Uh, this is Baroque style church reconstructed in the Baroque style after the big fire of Olomouc. Uh, the church uh, and uh, close to it is a monastery of St. Michel. These days uh, uh, University Palatsky of Olomouc, theological faculty, uh, has uh, accommodation for their students there. Uh, the St. Michel's church is very nice Baroque uh, style church. You can see all features of Baroque in, it, in the church itself. Uh, very beautiful St. Michel's altar with St. Michel, very beautiful Baroque style three uh, main parts of the church which represent the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and they are supported by 12 columns which represent apostles. No, and it really is a beautiful church. And then we kept walking a little bit longer, and then we actually went down, back downstairs, through the walls again, and f suddenly we emerged, and we're at this beautiful park. And we walked around there. There's, there's, it really was gorgeous. Talk about that park. That this is one of the parks of uh, city of Olomouc. Originally, the town walls were surrounded by flat land with no houses, nothing behind which an enemy could hide. So after the town walls were destroyed part of this uh, land became parks. So this is one of them called Bezručovi Sady. In This is English style park. That means that each tree and each bush uh, grow as it wants. Mm -hmm. Nobody cuts them. And uh, this park goes uh, and take you by the town walls around uh, the city center and you can climb upstairs and uh, get to Archbishop Street or you can go straight ahead to the cathedral. And that's what we did. We climbed through a big but we said you have, I think you have a botanical park, you said you have a rosarium there. And actually, interesting enough, we didn't go to see it, but you actually had a nuclear bomb shelter where 700 people could be uh, sheltered in case uh, some, somebody dropped a bomb here, namely probably the United States, but that's another story back in the communist days, right? Yeah, it, it, it has changed a little bit. So uh, Soviets uh, helped us to build a nuclear shelter for the case that Americans hit us, but situation changed, so Americans are helping us to fix Fix it in case the Russians are going to hit us. <laughs> oh, that's a, well, let's hope that doesn't happen. But now, the other thing is, you're right in the, hen uh, the, the, the heart of the university, too. So we passed, there were like students waving from, from the, the, the windows above us on the walls. And we, then we walked up through some stairs to another beautiful little park with bushes and things like that. It's a garden, really, right? It's a French style garden, so each bush has its shape. Uh, actually, these are Parkans uh, gardens. Uh, Initially, before it was a garden, uh, this location was uh, used as a storage place for cannons because it's on the top of the town walls. So in case enemy is approaching, all the trees in the parks are cut so it could be seen in the distance and the cannons are uh, located around the town walls. No, and it really was. And then we're through kind of an area that was frequented by the Habsburgs. In fact, in 1848, I, I believe the, the, uh, the then emperor was, I don't know, crowned, but he was, the, he was staying there got away from Vienna because there were revolutions going on in 1848. Tell us a little bit about that period and why they all were staying there. So it's uh, December the 2nd, 1848. Habsburgs uh, had been hiding in uh, the strongest fortification of Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Which was this, right? Which was <laughs> this, because they were afraid of their lives. So they stayed in uh, these days Archbishop's Palace, those days as well Archbishop's Palace. And that, uh, that December day, uh, s those days, seven years old uh, Franz Joseph uh, was was uh, said to be an, an, an emperor by his uncle uh, King Fr Fr Frederick the fifth no and so that was very so it's a very significant spot for the Austrian Hungarian Empire which this was and so you pass a lot through a royal was and then finally we get to this cathedral here uh, which is kind of the end of our tour uh, and now we actually have to go to have a brewery and have lunch right I think that's uh, that, that's what we're looking for now now Jan I want to thank you first of all it was a wonderful tour a really a very first glimpse of this all with, with which really is
is uh, a marvelous. It's 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 the really the second place maybe in in Czech Republic you should go after Prague. Uh, a lot of people think Chesky Kromlov or something like that. Uh, you you're you're rolling your eyes. No no come here first and 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 learn about this wonderful amazing town that was was a military base, a medieval fortress. Uh, the entire town was and has some amazing history behind it and actually some pretty good bars too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is said that uh, Olomouc is Prague without tourists and definitely without Chesky Krumlov tourists. <laughs> There you go. Now, Jana, where can people get in touch with you uh, if they want to get your services as a guide? Because we go out to about 114,000 travel advisors, travel agents who are booking their clients here. And where can they find you? Perfect. I can help you also with Kroměříž. Uh, they can find me on Google, Jana Krausová, tour guide in Olomouc, or I can give you my phone number right ahead. Okay, well, what is it? So it's uh, 00420 for the Czech Republic, and it's 721-495-525. Any email? Email is krausja at c e n t r u m dot c z and you're going to see this at the bottom of uh of the description of this video again yana thank you so much it was a marvelous tour i really had a great view i'm going to have to come back and learn even more about this wonderful town this wonderful city uh and and you know it really is a definitely a place that you should send your clients if they're visiting the czech republic again thank you so much thank you very much and come for a beer uh, let's go for a beer now we're now we're off i'm james chillinglaw And this is Insider Travel Report.